100% engagé à l'élimination des maladies tropicales négligées. Mouetien de Tchèque, au cours de la lutte à la ouvrir à des gens sur le haut. Abonnez de Vichu Mondoli au Rokshu Mohair Abosan Khatate, Amade Shotobhat, Protestrati Bodu Hotahabe. Aïe, Milkin is an entasse to the tropical diseases for Khatam Kenny Kili, Sophie Sud Perezmri. We 100% committed to ending neglected tropical diseases. A very warm welcome to this joint webinar hosted by World Health Organization and Uniting to Combat NTDs to mark World Neglected Tropical Diseases Day 2023. We're following on from last year when the theme called on us to all address the inequalities that characterize NTDs with a focus on achieving health equity. Now, after much diverted funding streams and setbacks caused by the pandemic, this year sees a renewed call for the need to increase awareness of and investment to end inequality and the poor health outcomes that allow neglected tropical diseases to take hold and devastate too many of the world's population. The theme for this year asks that we act now, act together and invest in NTDs. I'm Patricia Amira, your moderator, and before we begin, and for your convenience, allow me to briefly run through the session guidelines. There is uh, simultaneous interpretation available in French, Spanish, and Portuguese. To activate this service, of course, click on the interpretation on the pop-up bar at the bottom of your Zoom page. Kindly be aware that the session today will be live streamed, recorded, and available to view online after it has concluded, so as such, your participation is taken as consent. 
I'd like to remind our speakers who are joining us today to kindly keep their camera on during their panel, during their session, but to remain on mute until it's your time to speak. And of course, I'll endeavor to do the same. Um, I know we've had a few technical hitches trying to join, but um, I'm sure those will be resolved over the next couple of minutes as we begin. Um, I, I know it would be wonderful to know where uh, all the attendees are joining in from. So we do encourage you to introduce yourself using the Zoom chat function, just say hi, so-and-so from whichever organization um, and country as well. So social media hashtags to use are hashtag uh, WNTD day, D-A-Y at the end there. So hashtag WNTD day. Beat entities, of course, and we've also got hashtag 100% committed, written out as a word, ensuring, of course, that you tag both WHO and combat NTDs as well on your social media posts. By way of introduction to this session, I'm pleased to announce that the global report on NTDs 2020 30 is now available to view and download from the WHO website. It provides an up-to-date assessment of progress across the 20 diseases and disease groups. It also highlights the first two years of implementation of the roadmap for NTDs 2021 to 2030, as well as set in motion what is needed for the year ahead. So let's get a visual overview of that report. WHO and the global NTD community are working towards one goal, a world free of neglected tropical diseases. The launch of the new NTD roadmap for 2021 to 2030 was a turning point, but a changing funding landscape and unpredictable international context have led to challenges. NTDs continue to disproportionately affect the poorest members of the world community. 16 countries bear 80% of the global NTD burden. However, the number of people requiring NTD interventions has decreased by 25% over the last decade, falling by 80 million people between 2020 and 2021. More than 1 billion people were treated each year between 2016 and 2019, and as of December 2022, 47 countries had eliminated at least one NTD. But COVID-19 took a toll on community-based interventions and on people's ability to access health facilities. As a result, the number of people treated for NTDs fell by 34% between 2019 and 2020, before rebounding again in 2021. Mm -hmm. In 2022, WHO published 52 guidelines, tools and other information products to help the global NTD community. It continued to evaluate and approve new medicines to treat these debilitating and deadly conditions, working to ensure equity and human rights in NTD interventions. WHO works with countries to help put in place the actions and frameworks that will benefit their people. WHO wants NTD treatments to be sustainable, and is working with partners and donors to ensure this, building global collectives and platforms for advocacy. The last few years have been challenging for the global NTD community. Now, we need to reverse the delays and look to the future. We must invest in innovative operations and financing solutions that foster integration and cross-sectoral collaboration. We must boost global support for countries with the highest NTD burdens. And we must continue to facilitate country ownership and the sustainability of NTD programs through new approaches to financing and implementation. Together, we can foster sustainable interventions that will allow us to reach our 2030 goal of a world free of NTDs. A consolidated document to help us understand the scope and rationale behind the call to act now, act together and invest in NTDs. I can see lots of messages coming in here. Kebede Deribe Kasai from SIF, joining from Nairobi. Um, I also see Wendy Harrison from the SCI Foundation from the UK. Um, as I said, I just encourage you to just to say happy 
you know, World NTD Day, put your name in the chat and let us know where you're calling in from or you're listening in from. Now, to situate things even further, let's turn to our first panel of expert experts to discuss the progress made from specific contexts. We have John Moriyuki, who's the director for East, Southern and Central Africa with Sight Savers, Professor Margaret Japong, who's the director for the Institute uh, at the Institute of Health Research and also the coordinator of the Center for Health Policy and Implementation Research at the University of Health and Allied Sciences in Ghana. Rajiv Manji, who is Joint Secretary in the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare in India, joining us. Uh, but first, we'll turn to Camille Balaje, who is the Senior Health Programme Officer, Disease Prevention and Control Bureau at the Ministry of Health in the Philippines, who sent us this, uh, this response. The Philippines is an island country located in Southeast Asia and the Western Pacific region. It has a population size of more than 110 million and the number of islands is more than 7,000. The climate is tropical and maritime and it is endemic for several neglected tropical diseases with some having significant progress such as lymphatic filariasis, babies and leprosy, while others are still developing in terms of strengthening of interventions such as schistosomiasis, STH, foodborne traumatidiasis, yaws, dengue, and snake bites. Lymphatic filariasis was first recorded in the country in 1907, but it was only in the 1960s where control mechanisms were established after further evidence on its endemicity were reported during the malaria survey where LF cases were identified. In 1998, the country shifted from control to elimination following the World Health Assembly resolution calling member states to eliminate LF. In 2001, MDA was piloted and fast forward to 2022, 44 out of 46 endemic areas among the 81 administrative units have already stopped MDA. COVID-19 has had an effect on the continuity of services not only for LF, but also for other entities. Conducting MDA and performing surveys were a challenge at that time. As the countries bounced back due to availability of COVID-19 vaccines and a better understanding of the disease, services slowly returned to normal. For the Philippines, the future of the health system is achieving universal health care and strengthening primary care services. From vertical disease programs, we shifted to life stages. It is a challenge, but also an exciting opportunity for integration and improving quality of service. The impact of these integrations are yet to be determined. Support from partners have been very helpful to the government in this transition period. Together, both public and private organizations are working hand in hand for a smooth transition while ensuring that targets are still met for diseases and health outcomes. Great, thank you for that brief overview of NTDs in the Philippines, Camille. Turning to you, John, and picking up on what Camille has just said, challenges being exciting opportunities. And with 2023 being such a critical year for NTDs, how do you see progress in your region? Briefly, what is to be celebrated and what challenges remain? Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, happy NTD Day. Uh, thanks, Patricia. Uh, very, very important question. And I would say befitting a time like this when we are all celebrating mm. World NTD Day. Uh, indeed, 2023 is a critical year for NTDs, uh, but not only because we hope uh, for many more successes like we have done uh, in the last decade, but because currently everything is in the, in the balance. Mm -hmm. The global community has already made massive progress towards the control and elimination of neglected tropical diseases. 47 countries have already eliminated at least one NTD. But with the COVID-19 pandemic, sea funding resources taking a toll on community-based interventions and people's ability to access uh, health facilities, elimination targets are at risk. And we now find ourselves competing against many other global priorities. 
we urgently need to act now, uh, act together and invest in NTDs to ensure that we can continue working towards uh, elimination goals. Uh, we've made a lot of uh, progress, uh, particularly in the region where I'm based, uh, East, Central, and Southern Africa, and more generally in uh, Africa. Uh, Africa is significantly affected by NTDs. It accounts for around 35% of the world NTD burden. Uh, however, the continent has seen an incredible amount of leadership and progress over the past decade in ending NTDs. For example, in May 20, 2016, the WHO Region Office for Africa created the Expanded Special Project for Elimination of uh, Neglected Tropical Diseases, ESPEN, yes, to accelerate yes. eliminating NTDs in Africa by disseminating best practices, coordinating activities, and offering technical guidance where needed. Thanks to efforts like this, 20 countries in Africa have now eliminated at least one NTD. SiteSavers works closely with government and a network of partners to eliminate three NTDs across East Central and Southern Africa, that is trachoma, uh, river blindness, and uh, lymphatic filariasis. In my time as site savers, I've seen Ghana become the first country in the WHO's Africa region to eliminate trachoma as a public health problem. Uh, that was back in, 19, in 2018. And then the same disease was confirmed eliminated by WHO in the Gambia back in 2021. And uh, more recently, Malawi and Togo uh, was confirmed to have eliminated trachoma la last year. This indeed is a great uh, progress. There are huge milestones for the countries and their governments, but it takes a huge amount of work and collaboration to eliminate a disease like a, a trachoma. Uh, moving on, uh, in terms of what we need to celebrate now, uh, the integral part that government and ministries of health play in control and elimination of NTDs, not only are governments a key ingredient to eliminating diseases, their commitment and ownership are also vital in ensuring they remain on course to elimination of NTDs. But vigilance and commitment by all who play a part in eliminating NTDs, NTDs need to remain high from the global level down to community level. It's not only the job of the government, it's a long-term collaborative approach that will help us keep ne neglected tropical diseases eliminated forever. Financing the elimination of NTD has significant return on investment. WHO investment case for ending NTDs published in 2017 estimated that for every one US dollar invested in preventing chemotherapy, it brings an estimated debt benefit of affected individuals to about uh, 25 US dollars. Intersectoral collaboration is key to eliminating NTDs. For example, as clean water and good sanitation and hygiene prevent the spread of certain NTDs, site savers and its partners work to join programs with these uh, sectors. Collaboration rather than competition is vital in mm -hmm. the fight against NTDs. Site savers and its partners have proven that by building coalitions and strengthening multi-sectoral partnerships with government, donors and partners, the chances of elimination are higher. Uh, this is without uh, challenges. I've talked about the progress key milestone, but there are also challenges. We must keep making a case for people uh, why they need to invest in NTDs and how this aligns with other global priorities. Right now, everything is hanging in the balance. We've come so far, but there's a real risk that funding could stop and so much progress could be lost. Mm. We need funding for every NTD, but site savers are particularly concerned about funding for liver blindness. Uh, this takes long term in terms of uh, uh, treatment. It can spare span across uh, decades, and therefore it is worth to achieve uh, elimination in terms of uh, funding, uh, elimination of uh, river blindness. More support for DRC, where funding and support for NTDs is now really stretched. It's the largest country in the sub-Saharan uh, Africa and the 10th poorest in the world with an enormous burden of NTDs. MDA cannot stop unless there's funding to conduct population-based prevalence surveys among us other surveillance and reporting activities. Management of morbidity caused by infections, including hydrocell and lipidema is often unfunded. This prevents national uh, programs from achieving the criteria for elimination, even when MDA stops. 
Activities that sustain elimination milestones continue to be a challenge, such as behavior change campaigns, uh, data integration, and health uh, systems uh, strengthening. In conclusion, I would say, investing in NTDs creates a ripple effect in society. Not only can it stop uh, vicious cycles of poverty, pain, disability, and stigma, it can lead to benefits such as increased productivity, improved school attendance, and greater empowerment for women. Mm. NTD elimination programs are transformative and demonstrate outstanding value for money in global health. By eliminating NTDs, we enhance the health, quality of life, and long-term well-being for millions of people affected by these conditions. The control and elimination of NTDs will allow health services to redirect resources to other important needs. This is why we must act now, act together and invest in NTDs. Thank you. Thank you so much for stating the situation so succinctly, John. Um, you know, John mentioned Ghana there. So we're turning to you now, Margaret. I'm sure you'd agree that challenges provide an opportunity to collaborate. Tell us how you see, and of course we know there's been much progress in Ghana, but tell us how you see the progress so far. What are the key challenges that are being faced, particularly in generating the research needed for critical gaps, Margaret? Thank you very much, um, Patricia, and uh, happy um, World NTD Day to, to all of us. Um, indeed, having been part of the progress of working to put the roadmap together and seeing its launch has really been a great pleasure um, to see how widespread it has been disseminated globally and how even at country level it is being used to develop master plans and investment cases. Um, at least in Ghana, for the first time, I've seen our master plans go out really quickly with our investment cases put together. So in the last two or so years, how do I see the progress that has been made? And this is to Muele, if she's listening. I remember she used to say, we need to advocate, we need to advocate, we need to let people hear about it. And I think the advocacy around the launch of the roadmap has really, really paid off. Um, today we are celebrating World NTD Day. It's the third um, of its kind, and uh, we, we are one of 12 global health days and weeks. It's all adding to the awareness creation and advocacy on NTDs. And in my university in Ghana, everybody is geared up um, to make sure that this, this happens. So this is quite a bit of progress um, that I see. Of course, we have the Kigali declarations and um, the signatories have committed to the achievement of the SDG three targets on NTD and to the delivery of the 2030 roadmap, ending the neglect to attaining the sustainable development goals. And for me in particular, it was heartwarming to engage with academics because in, in coming up with the uh, Kigali declaration, different stakeholders were engaged. And I was part of the group that engaged with academics and the joy and excitement of being involved right at the beginning is something that, that shows the kind of progress we are making. So you have academics committed to working with programs, uh, policy makers to ensure the delivery of the targets and milestones of the goals. Of course, it has been said that countries have certified or validated um, one, at least one NTD in, in 2022 alone. Um, Ghana was mentioned for trachoma, but just at the end of the year, we also um, eliminated HAT, uh, for which I'm quite proud. And I think my president will be talking later in the day about, about some of those things. Yeah. But more importantly, working on female genital schistosomiasis, I've seen a lot of progress towards engagement and working across um, partnerships and across sectors, um, which is one of the pillars of the, of the roadmap uh, to ensure that we are work, uh, working together outside our comfort zone. So working in female genital schisto, we've seen family health come on board. We've seen HIV AIDS come on board. We've seen school health come on board to work, to deal with an NTD. And I think that that has made uh, things really go well in trying to raise more awareness about some of the NTDs that we deal with. Um, we've seen quite a lot of effort also uh, from countries trying to include neglected tropical diseases in routine service delivery and contributing data to routine uh, health management information systems. We could do better on that, but at least it is happening. It never used to happen 
but it's happening now. In terms of the key challenges, of course, COVID struck. Um, we saw delays in the delivery of MDAs and other community-based interventions, um, and it affected the implementation of some research um, studies. Of course, our institution also suffered FCDA cuts, um, and it brought an abrupt end to one of our very important um, grants. We are still picking up the pieces from there because we had to engage the communities and they're asking what happened. But then one of the other challenges I see moving forward is, is non-engagement of communities in the timing and delivery of mass drug administration. Um, in the early 90s, there were studies on community-directed treatment. These days, you find out that the timing and delivery of interventions at the community level is done depending on when funding arrives and the community is not really involved. And some of the studies we have conducted have showed that this is a challenge and communities really want to be engaged and to feel a part of the entire uh, process. Um, another challenge I see is that our governments are still really heavily dependent on external funding. And one of the pillars of the roadmap is to ensure that there's country ownership. So, I mean, we, we look forward to seeing our countries taking more ownership and committing a bit more domestic resources um, to the fight of NTDs to ensure uh, sustainability. Um, the low level of integration of NTDs in routine service delivery is something which is also um, of a challenge. Otherwise, our health sector continues to see NTDs as a standalone rather than a part of the entire health system. Um, if it is not done, it will not get the needed attention in the service in the uh, Ministry of Health. So then what research is needed? I think currently there are several, several research areas, but let me just pick on four uh, issues. First of all, the gap between the burden of, of disease for NTDs in children and research devoted to this population. Most of the research we do focuses on adults, but if you take some of the work I'm doing on, on uh, genital schisto and the distribution of, of, of praziquantel for schistosomiasis, Children who are out of school are not really targeted that much, even though there's the drive to go in that direction. We need the pediatric formulations. And I know a lot of work has gone into getting these things out, but we need a lot more um, in that area, looking at NTDs and children. And then also developing of more and better medicines, diagnostics and other tools to fill operational gaps. So there are tools and diagnostics but we really need more to be able to deal with, especially some of the new um, entities that were included in the list. Of course, there's the need for also systematic screening or monitoring and evaluation for resistance developing in NTD programs. We don't talk that much about it, but anything could happen in certain places. Some of it is being reported, but we need to have systems to monitor and evaluate these. And of course, with my background in implementation research, I think there's the need for us to delve in more and for researchers to work better and closer with program managers as they identify challenges in deploying their various um, interventions that they have. Let me end it from here now. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Margaret. Um, you know, you've heard that in country ownership and resources, of course, that's important. And the gap between research and children. I don't know, what does a picture look like in India, Rajiv? What's working? What are you know, the current obstacles that you're facing there, Rajiv. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. With regard to the current situation in India, uh, before I uh, deliberate upon the questions, uh, let me uh, give you a preview that 20 tropical diseases are called neglected primarily because they are largely absent from the global health agenda and enjoy little or limited funding. I would therefore congratulate WHO for selecting a pertinent theme for the webinar while observ observing Neglected Tropical Diseases Day 2023. And the theme is Act Now, Act Together, Invest in Tropical Diseases. So my uh, compliments and my uh, uh, best wishes to WHO for this. Perhaps uh, to uh, my uh, limited understanding, I believe that even major pharmaceutical industries don't take much interest in the area of tropical disease 
uh, uh, medicines treating tropical diseases because these diseases primarily affect the marginalized population of various countries. However, India with its overall development agenda of the country does not consider these 20 diseases as neglected. These diseases have engaged focused attention of the government of the day. India has geared up to work towards control, elimination, and eradication of major neglected tropical diseases ahead of sustainable development goals target of 2030. Out of the seven diseases which are prevalent here in India, I shall be speaking on the country's progress as has been asked by Ms. Patricia. So I would be giving the overview as to what have we done by now and how we are moving towards that. So among the uh, seven, the three are having uh, a, a huge burden. I would be talking about uh, leprosy, I would be talking about lymphatic filariasis and visceral leishmaniasis. Uh, during the last few years, India has recorded significant reduction in leprosy cases, lymphatic filariasis, and visceral leishmaniasis. However, India's contribution to global burden of leprosy is still around 54% if we compare with the current data. Lymphatic filariasis is around 52% and visceral leishmaniasis is around 10%. Uh, with a view to address these concerns, new sets of strategies have been put in place to accelerate the process of elimination or eradication of these three major entities. India is on the verge of eliminating visceral leishmaniasis as a public health problem by the end of 2023 itself. And this can be evident from the fact that this disease, visceral leishmaniasis, was prevalent in 633 sub-districts, what we call here blocks, and it has come down from 633 blocks to one block only, to one sub-district only. And we are almost on the verge of eliminating visceral leishmaniasis. And very shortly, we shall be submitting our dossiers to WHO. So uh, of course, it will be eliminated as a public health problem. And what we define that, uh, uh, you know, the prevalence, uh, incidence of prevalence less than one per 10,000 population in those blocks. So as public health problem, we shall be eliminating this disease, visceral leishmaniasis. And we would be happy to share the success story we had, how we you know, designed our strategy and how we are moving towards that. 13 January 2023 will go down as a landmark day in India's fight against neglected tropical diseases, and particularly lymphatic filariasis. On 13 January 2023, Honorable Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare declared that India was committed to end lymphatic filariasis by 2027, three years ahead of the global target for elim eliminating this disabling neglected tropical diseases. Lymphatic filariasis, we have started a differing mode of mass drug administration. Usually in case of DA, we used to cover 65, we are going to cover even more than 65% of population. For IDA, we are targeting almost uh, 95%. So this time we are not going to miss the bus. We are not going to give a slip to this and we have been working at different level not only intrasectoral, it is also intersectoral. Sometimes a doctor uh, looking for a particular disease would also be sensitized to be careful to the uh, lymphatic filariasis, to be careful to the post or dermal leishmaniasis or post VL dermal leishmaniasis. So all intrasectoral uh, coordination has also been strengthened. As it is known to the world about leprosy, 
that India eliminated leprosy as a public health problem in the year 2005. But this was at the national level, uh, not at the sub-national level, not at the district level. So uh, uh, that posed a major you know, concern for all of us that why we can achieve this target at national level when we went down to the state level or district level, the situation was really serious. So from 2005 onwards, we have been working, but from 2002, three, today only we have launched the new strategy for eliminating leprosy as public health problem again by the end of 2023 uh, at the district level and sub-district level. It is going to be a major challenge. Although the prevalence rate has come down from 0.69 per 10,000 population in the year 201415 to 0.45 per 10,000 population in the year 202122. Grade two disability has also come down from 0.71 per million in the year 2014-15 to, th that was 1.71 per million to 1.54 million, uh, 1.54 per million population. So these data do speak about the achievement we have made, but that may not be sufficient for a country like India. So we have to really work hard and India has embarked on, embarked on elimination of leprosy by 2002-7 again with its revised strategy. This has been done primarily keeping in view that in case something goes wrong, some challenges we are witnessing in terms of lepra reaction, we are witnessing challenges in terms of antimicrobial resistance. So all these challenges, we have also started working on research and the organizations, they are working on research. We have developed standard operating procedures as to what to do in case of lepra reactions at the local level primary health centers and what to do in case of uh, uh, my antimicrobial uh, resistance. So with all these strategy put in place, India is working hard to ensure that first we are able to eliminate these three major entities from India, and we would be happy to support the endeavor of WHO. WHO has always been supporting India technically, and we acknowledge your support. Rajiv, My very interesting what you're saying here. We've got uh, Aparna coming in a little bit later, and I'm sure she'll be able to, to expand a little bit more on what you've mentioned. Just, with regard just to one minute I'll legacy. conclude. So one minute I'll conclude. So while concluding my speech, I would like to state that for the world, these diseases are neglected tropical diseases, but for India, these diseases are prioritized tropical diseases for control, elimination, and right. eradication as public health problem. And this will be done well before SDG goal of 2030. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that, Rajiv. I do like that prioritized tropical diseases. And thank you, of course, to all our panelists for their incisive contributions. And um, before I introduce our next set of speakers, and I think I mentioned Aparna will be coming on, let's pause a moment to watch this brilliant animation from Uniting to Combat NTDs. In 1967, 150,000 people from 73 nations united on a mission. For 12 years, they braved floods and civil wars. Their success hung in the balance more than once. Then came a day, just like every day before it. A Somali man called Ali Mal Marlin caught smallpox. He would likely join the 500 million lives already claimed. Or if spared death, then blindness or disfigurement would be his fate. But this was no ordinary day, because Ali was the last ever victim of smallpox, and he went on to make a full recovery. Through an extraordinary cooperative effort, the world had achieved the impossible. For the first time in our history, humans eradicated a disease. 
we can also make history by ending neglected tropical diseases. Because neglected tropical diseases can be treated. And they can be prevented. Incredible progress has already been made with neglected tropical diseases being eliminated in country after country. Creating positive waves for millions of people. COVID threatened to stall our hard-fought progress. But we can get back on track. We have the medicine. We have the partnerships. We have the plan. We can make history and put an end to neglected tropical diseases in our lifetime and lift over a billion people from misery to hope. All it will take is our 100% commitment. So let's act now, act together, and invest in neglected tropical diseases. Yes, and here's to more extraordinary days like the one Ali experienced. And as we've heard and just seen, you know, yes, there's excellent work, but the rationale for investment appears crystal clear. Allow me to introduce our next group of speakers, Dr. Sose Fal, who is the new director of the Global Programme for Neglected Tropical Diseases at WHO. We also have a partner, Sri Kantam, who's the director of research at Lepra Society. From the End Fund, Sam Mayer, the Vice President for Public Affairs um, uh, at the End Fund, of, End Fund, of course, and Shomi Chowdhury, who's a board member at Youth Combating Entities and a water sanitation and hygiene activist, has sent in a message. And last but not least, Dr. Satoshi Ezo, who is the director in the International Corporation Bureau at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Japan. A very warm welcome to you all. Dr. Fal, books have been written about the benefits of a fresh perspective and joining the NTD community as you recently have. What do you see as the arguments for investment so far? Thank you very much, Patricia. Good afternoon to all. So good morning and good evening to people connecting from different time zones. I would like to start by wishing a happy World NTD Day to all of us. This is, as you know, my first one as director of the Global NTD Program in the show. I'm very happy to be celebrating with you today as a member of this passionate community. I would like also to pay my respect to my predecessor, Dr. Moele Manisela. She was not only an exceptional global health leader, but she also provided us an excellent vision for our work, the 2030 NTD Roadmap, which was so expertly brought to fruition with contribution from all of you gathered here today. And I feel very much that we owe it to her and to the community we serve ensures that we deliver on the NTD roadmap that is. I know many of you, many of us are missing Mwele dearly. She was a remarkable person, a remarkable presence, and an inspiration to all who met and knew her. I'm starting out on my new own NTD journey as director of this global program, but already I can see quite clearly that while we may have a community full of commitment and dedication, we do not yet have the required investment to deliver on the job. There is, however, no doubt that the argument for continued and sustained investment in neglected tropical diseases is an all right, is powerful and deep compelling. Entities capture communities in the cycle of poverty but through community-led intervention, communities can be released and empowered to live more purposely and uh, fulfilling lives. Notably, NTD intervention have been shown to be associated with high cost effectiveness and high return on investment. But we can make them even more efficient and sustainable with strategic investment in key areas such as diagnostic, monitoring, and evaluation access and logistics by fostering integration, packaging, mainstreaming, 
cross-cutting actions and cross-sectoral approaches. And by promoting country ownership, including through strong advocacy for domestic investment. But the economic argument is not the only argument we have to make. Investment in NTDs really is an investment in a wider global health agenda. We have programs and interventions that already reach some of the most isolated part of our world community, some of the most remote areas and communities where NTD intervention maybe is the only contact the people living there have with established formal health care. It is up to us to leverage that power and reach and return it onto something generally transformative. We know that entity platforms and programs are playing a significant role in the drive tool agenda such as universal coverage, health security, and so on. I want the decade to 2030 to be the one in which we bring this to full scale. In the changing landscape, we no longer have the luxury of silent thinking or actions. We must work more efficiently and more collaboratively. Through cross-sector working, which has both the work that we do and our ability to secure investment. Before joining the NTB program, as you know, I work in health emergency, where the focus was also on multiple diseases affecting marginalized and vulnerable populations. And in that field, we learned that the value of talking and working with one voice, a united and strong voice, uh, what we can accomplish together as a community will always be the great, will always be greater than the sum of our individual parts. We heard in the first panel about the progress we are making. This is of course excellent news, but we need to accelerate and we need action too. Delivering on the 2030 roadmap target will be far from easy. And if you are present today, it is because you already know that. But it will be worth the effort for the billion of people who stand to benefit from action we can implement. I want to thank everybody today and everyone in the NTB community for the welcome you have given me. And I look forward to a close and fruitful working relationship. I thank you. Thank you, Dr. Farlin. As mentioned, turning impassioned commitment and dedication to also translate to investment to eliminate these diseases of poverty. Now, central, of course, to the roadmap are the people and communities, as you've just heard. And as I turn to you, Aparna, first, um, I hope you had a good day marking World Leprosy Day yesterday. Um, but to your question, you have extensive experience both in research and administrative and with leprosy specifically which has its own specific requirements in terms of approach. It'd be good to hear your insights from a community perspective and the importance of sustained investments in, uh, in NTDs. Thank you, Patricia. Hi, everyone. And today it is very uh, auspicious to be happy with all of you, the global community of people interested in NTDs. I really would like to wish for a day that we all celebrate that World No NTD Day. I hope we all will be looking along with the roadmap. At the end of the road will be that. And uh, yes, I do agree. And before that, I would like to thank uh, the United uh, to Combat the NTDs and WHO uh, to make this a very important topic uh, on investment. And my predecessors and all the previous speakers have already set the tone that how is important uh, the investment and various aspects, especially I would like to take the cue from Dr. Fall, where he mentioned the integration and also the participation and advocacy. So from a community perspective, that's what I'm going to bring as a response from our community. So here today, I'm also representing the Disease Management, Disability and Inclusion Group, which is a community-based group working along with NMN. When you see uh, investment into entities, we all understand that it is more like towards a road map of WHO, which is more people-focused. 
we know because it is of its multi-sectoral approach and integrated approach has always put the people under the center of its focus. However, here, the people who are affected by NTDs are to be looked at not just as a whole of their disease, but they are like, you know, they have the consequences of all other aspects the diseases bring to them, including the geopolitical issues, socioeconomic consequences, problems like stigma and all these things. So when we think of the investment from a community perspective, we have a lot of possibilities to make it a more sustainable and effective investment. But a few of them I am bringing it today. One of them is an inclusive healthcare. We know a sustained investment into healthcare makes it more inclusive, especially in order to make it more appreciative and accountable of the various divergent needs which are across the entities. So as we know that the group of entities each may be having its own, but collectively these entities have a lot of very special needs and divergent needs. Sometimes they grow across the um, cultures and various aspects. Accountability is also very important at the grassroots level because the community workers, these are the people, uh, the healthcare workers who work in the community at the grassroots are the persons who are the first point of contact. So they also have to be made more accountable in delivering all the services that are relevant to NTD. Apart from this, it is very important to make all the NTD care more available and accessible at the community level. That includes preventive therapies, diagnostics, treatment, and more importantly, the post-treatment chronic care, for example, wound care or disability care, which is cross-cutting across many entities that is very important as far as the inclusive healthcare is concerned. And one more important aspect of investment is to make the communities more participatory. All the decisions should be made while involving the communities and they are not just at the grassroots level or the implementation. It is at all several layers of the NTD system, the community should be made uh, more participatory or inclusive uh, investments. And very important aspect is the integration. I'm, I'm glad that Dr. Fall has already mentioned this, but I would like to make it a very special mention because integration is the key to making it more an effective investments. For example, the integration can happen across the entities and sometimes it can also make it through learning from other diseases. For example, some of the non-communicable diseases uh, can also share their experiences. For example, wound care and foot care is common in diabetes and leprosy, LF and any other, many other diseases. And lymphedema, which is common and which has a lot of resources in breast cancer and some other malignancies can also be cross-learned towards uh, the lymphedema, lymphatic filariasis and other such diseases. So this should not be a kind of a siloed. The investment into entities is also through investing in knowledge, resources and uh, also the cross-learning. And, and it is one more important aspect is while making it more participatory, there should be also addressed the community's needs, especially from the barriers that they most of the times they uh, follow. These are the barriers of communication and language, especially for the communities from Global South. It's very important these barriers also to be taken out. So they have to be removed to make it more participatory, more integrated, and more uh, inclusive uh, approach of investment for entities. Finally, I would like to sum up that Investment in, in NTDs should be looked at uh, through inclusive healthcare integration and community participation is an investment in reduction of poverty, allowing people to lead healthier, more economically productive lives for themselves and their families. In conclusion, 
sustained investment on entities leads to more focus on those particular set of diseases so that one day they will no longer be neglected and in a remote they, they no longer exist this is what is a, a perspective from the community of the people affected by community of the entities and as a, as a researcher this is a collective input from all our community thank you very much very clearly put there apana thank you so much and of course also as we heard in the who report video earlier these innovative approaches just like apana has been mentioning um, you know, to financing and implementation is key. And of course, the End Fund have done an incredible job uh, to date, raising resources for NTDs from private philanthropy. So from your experience, Sam, how can we bring in new donors to NTDs? Plus, given that you also have a funding model in which you co-invest with country governments, it'd be good to briefly hear why that is important to you and your donors at the End Fund. Thank you, Patricia. Um, firstly, thank you to to everyone. It's the End Fund is delighted to to be here with you all. Um, uh, thank you to my fellow panelists, Dr. Sose, for your leadership. And uh, Aparna, I just want to echo so much of what you said. I, I think you've you've essentially laid out a language that we all, from all of our perspectives, need to be incorporating into the work that we do in the sector. And so. Uh, just to thank you for for highlighting the the areas that you did, um, Patricia. When it comes to engaging more donors in the space, uh, there's of course no simple answer to this. Um, but I think drawing on on the end funds experience working with philanthropists, there are some fundamental approaches I think are very important. The first is to present the right investment hypothesis. So. To do this, we need to understand the motivations, of course, of any donor, but a critical element is the context in which they're considering a potential investment. So, for example, today we have a robust and growing community of philanthropists in the space who not only invest uh, individually uh, to fill gaps, keep treatment cycles on track, test innovations, areas that are perhaps within their own personal realms, of interest, but they also look to engage with and learn from and co-invest with and maybe even motivate each other to do more. Um, you know, our community of philanthropists, they're continue to looking for continue to look for opportunities to work together. They're driven, uh, I think, by the, the deepened trust that they have with one another and especially their significant experience now um, in achieving more impact together than separately. And this, Dr. Sose gets to the point you made about us collectively being more than the sum of our individual parts. And I think for a, a donor standpoint, um, a, a fundamentally important element is the role played by the pharmaceutical companies in our sector and how their donations offer huge leverage opportunities to incentivize donors and philanthropists. It's been 35 years since, for example, Merck's original Mectazan commitment. And today we're seeing Senegal's announcement of their extraordinary progress in the fight against river blindness. And that brings great hope that perhaps Merck's donation will no longer be needed in some areas of, of that, um, that region. And that allows philanthropic co-investments to eventually be channeled elsewhere for greater impact. And today we're also seeing significant evolution in the corporate social responsibility space with um, companies recognizing more and more that the well-being, the productivity of the communities who contribute to their value chains are directly impacted, they're held back, they're limited by NTDs. And so that offers more incentives for companies to engage. But in terms of how we present these investment opportunities to investors and to the, the champions, I think, who can influence investors, there are two fundamentally important ingredients. The first is a robust evidence base. So accuracy, of course, breeds credibility. And where we are quantifying the burden of disease, the cost of service delivery, even the cost of inaction in a certain context, the more up-to-date, the more relevant, the more comprehensive the data that we're using uh, are, 
the more compelling the argument's going to be. And for example, I've been thrilled to see that today, Nigeria's Federal Ministry of Health is launching its new five-year NTD master plan alongside the launch of a new report by Deloitte in Nigeria that has, in a very sort of up-to-date manner, calculated the economic and social returns on the investments that will help bring the targets in their master plan to life. And a second element here, which is equally, if not more important, and this gets to and, and should be infused entirely by so much of what Aparna just said, is storytelling. I think when storytelling is done well, it not only, uh, and, and I'm echoing Aparna you here again, it not only should center the, the, the dignity, the experience of those whose stories are told, um, but it, you know, it should also genuinely shine a light on the toll, the reality uh, that that take NTDs take on on people, their families, communities, but it should also bring us hope, and it should, certainly from an investor standpoint, it should allow investors to envision what might be possible with their support. It should be creative and it should inspire their action. And a great example of that will be seen actually this evening at the United Nations in New York with the unveiling of a new body of fine art photography led by Ethiopian artist and activist Ida Molina called Reframing Neglect. And this is a collection that has already activated leaders from across the realms of politics, finance, sport, and, and the media. Um, and you asked about the, the funding model of co-investment with governments. I mean, to the end fund, this is fundamentally important to our approach. And frankly, the only way that we will contribute towards the local ownership uh, and the sustainability of NTD programming to, that is highlighted in, in the NTD roadmap from WHO. And although government contributions, I think, are rarely quantified in enough detail for external audiences, it's clear that you know, the financial, the human, the infrastructural investments made by governments, they set the foundation for any NTD program. And it's only when we're better able to quantify those investments that we can more effectively negotiate and set expectations around greater contributions in the future. A great example here is the work currently being done by the government of Kenya uh, to do this quantification work so that we can improve the clarity uh, with which we're coordinating philanthropic investments with government, and then more accurately and effectively advocate for the greater domestic resource mobilization uh, that's been talked about today. Wow, so much that's been mentioned there, but uh, I like that you brought in that whole art aspect. I mean, that's something that's close to my heart, but it, it just to use and, and, and you know, um, work with all sorts of uh, different sectors. But you mentioned meticulous data, hopeful storytelling done well, you know, to inspire action. I mean, these are really um, heart and mind type important um, uh, points. But of course, there's been the mention of silos by a few of the speakers. Um, let's turn to Shomi um, Chowdhury now. Can you tell us why um, investments in NTDs are critical, but also an investment that, that is also an investment in other agendas. Chowdhury, uh, Chowdhury just come in there. Investment in NTDs is critical because the lives of a billion people worldwide are dependent on it. The NTDs unfairly tax the world's most marginalized groups in terms of their health and finances. It is both economical and equitable to fund initiatives to combat NTDs. The return on investment is manifold. However, we need to get past our silo mindset and take a collaborative approach. In addition to NTDs, it's critical to invest in other agendas that are intimately related. For example, water, sanitation and hygiene wash is a vital tool for managing and preventing NTDs. Sanitation is important for preventing exposure to diseases such as the soil transmitted helminth infections, schistosomiasis and trachoma, while clean water and hygienic conditions in households and healthcare institutions are crucial for managing and treating many NTDs. Two billion people still lack safe drinking water. My organization Awareness 360 works with last mile communities where marginalized people, um, particularly women and children, continue to suffer from diseases due to um, lack of wash facilities and awareness, including the NTDs. Investing in wash not only helps them prevent diseases, but also thrive economically. Similarly, NTDs run the danger of 
being accelerated by climate change because variations in climate, relative humidity, rainfall and temperature have a direct impact on them. Just a few months ago, my country Bangladesh saw the second largest outbreak of dengue since 2000, with the largest having occurred in 2019. Last year's high number of dengue illnesses is being attributed to unusually heavy rains since June 2022, together with high temperatures and high humidity levels that have led to an upsurge in mosquito populations across the country. Warmer temperatures and extreme weather events frequently give vector-borne diseases additional chances to flourish, so investing in climate action will also contribute to the fight against the NTDs. We also should invest in young people. There is a significant funding gap when it comes to youths and youth-led initiatives. Youth combating NTDs, for instance, is setting an example of meaningfully involving young people by building their capacity using storytelling, technology, and creative media to shed a much needed spotlight on this movement and championing concrete actions on the ground. That's why it's so important that we think and act holistically. That way we will see a multifaceted impact which will contribute to not only the elimination of the NTDs but also to other global goals. Thank you. Sorry, Patricia, we can't hear you. Patricia, you are muted. Can you unmute yourself? Sorry. It's amazing how two years later we still get this wrong. But thank you so much um, to show me meaningful, engaging um, of the youth in NTD elimination strategies. And I couldn't agree more with her there. Um, so she mentions multifaceted impacts, which of course is best supported by robust health policies. Dr. Satoshi, your perspective on the rationale for investing in NTDs is pertinent here. Why now? Uh, thank you, Patricia, and thank you, Deborah Cho and the organizers for this opportunity. Uh, so I'm Dr. Ezoe, representing the Japanese government, but also they're representing an initi initiative called the Uniting Efforts for Innovative Innovation Access and Delivery. So from the perspective of human security, so we strongly believe that health systems must be able to effectively respond to and overcome health challenges to meet the sustainable development goals, especially when many of the goals are way off the truck due to COVID-19. So coming back to your question of why NTDs, so simply put, because there will be no UHC without addressing NTDs so that we can make sure no one is left behind. So Japan has invested in multiple initiatives uh, and, and partnerships leveraging G7, G20, and other key forums. But I just like to highlight two important initiatives for NTDs. One is the GHEAT Fund or Global Health Innovative Technology Fund, EP, that UNDP is uh, spearheading. So the GHEAT Fund invests in R&D for health technologies for NTDs. And the rationale for this investment is that NTDs are grossly under-researched, under-treated, largely due to un underfunding, despite affecting more than a billion people every year. The GHIT Fund aims to close the gap in R&D for available technologies, especially those from Japan. And the second one is the Access and Del Delivery Partnership, ADP. And through this, UNDP, WHO, TDR, and PATH work with uh, low- and middle-income countries' governments and uh, partners to strengthen health systems and build capacities along the value chain of access and delivery to increase access to health technologies that address NTDs, TB, and malaria. So uniting efforts for innov innovation, access, and delivery that I mentioned is a global platform established in 2019 by the government of Japan, GHIT Fund, and uh, ADP by UNDP to bring together funders, innovators, governments, and other stakeholders across the R&D access and delivery continuum to discuss and try to find solutions to the ch changing 
affect challenges affecting access to vital health technologies to eliminate NTDs. So for example, we are proud to be working with the WHO on a toolkit for NTD national investment cases to support LMIC's governments in their investment and overall national responses with sustainable financing. And, and lastly, I just want to highlight that uh, committed to highlighting NTDs in the context of UHC. So once again, no UHC without addressing NTDs. Happy NTD days. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Satoshi. Compelling perspectives from our panelists. Thank you all for taking time to share your insights on this special day. We'll now take a moment to hear a special message from Ahmed Al-Mandari, the Regional Director for the WHO East and Mediterranean Regional Office. We are committed to supporting member states in the Eastern Mediterranean region to achieve the targets of 2021-2030 roadmap for neglected tropical diseases. Act now, act together, invest in entities. À l'Organisation mondiale de la santé, nous nous engageons à soutenir nos États membres afin qu'ils puissent atteindre les cibles de la feuille de route 2030 des maladies tropicales négligées. Agissons maintenant, agissons ensemble et investissons dans la lutte contre les maladies tropicales négligées. The regional director, followed there by Yvan Houtin, the director of Universal Health Coverage, Communicable Diseases, also at WHO Eastern Mediterranean Regional Office. Thank you both for your continued commitment towards eliminating NTDs and achieving the roadmap targets. Now, there are numerous benefits in creating and maintaining meaningful partnerships and collaborations. And they're all well documented, you know, new ideas, novel solutions, increased productivity and problem solving. And on a celebratory day like today, it's just hearing from partners across the globe. I saw some of the messages, you know, people just saying, hello, friends, and you are old and new friends of the NTD community. It just brings a renewed sense of focus and solidarity. Just watch this. Les maladies tropicales négligées touchent plus de 2 milliards de personnes dans le monde, dont 40% sont localisées en Afrique. Le Sud Africa et ses partenaires s'engagent davantage à atteindre les objectifs de la fédération de l'OMS 2021-2030. Core NTD and the NTD Support Center are honored to be part of the NTD community of partners working to eliminate NTDs. This World NTD Day. We pledge to support the research that's required to end the neglect. At DNDI, we are committed to develop treatments that meet the needs of communities affected by neglected diseases. By innovating together, we can achieve WHO's NTD Roadmap 2030. The Neglected Tropical Disease Roadmap 2030 calls for stronger accountability for strengthened response to neglected tropical diseases. At the African Leaders Malaria Alliance, we are committed to accelerating this through high level engagement and the use of neglected tropical disease scorecards for accountability and action. Whether we're in Atlanta or out here in the world, like we are in Sudan, the Carter Center is committed to battling neglected tropical diseases. Central to the Global Schistosomiasis Alliance, is our firm belief that by working together, we will reach our elimination targets sooner. We unite stakeholders at all levels to increase commitment, knowledge and long-term investment, much needed long-term investment, to achieve elimination of this debilitating disease. Let's seize the opportunity now, quicken the pace and help countries reach the NTD roadmap targets. In Mundosano, we stand for equity and health for all is a first need for equity. We are completely aligned with the roadmap of WHO. We believe, we trust in WHO leadership. Bridges to Development is proud to support the WHO roadmap through the FGS Integration Group, or FIG, strengthening connection between women's health and the neglected tropical diseases, and also championing the elimination of the skin NTDs in collaboration with communities and national programs. Here at the International Society for Neglected Tropical Diseases, we're very happy, we're very honored to be joining the global community in celebrating the World NTD Day. We reaffirm our commitment 
in the fight against these diseases and to raising the many, many voices working together. At WhyHer, we are committed to overcoming the gender equity and social inclusion related barriers to achieving the control and elimination of NTDs. This World NTD Day, WhyHer solidifies that commitment. American Leprosy Missions is committed to the WHO 2030 NTD Roadmap. Join us in breaking barriers to health and renewing hope. I'm Captain Monica Paris, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention remains committed to working with global partners to develop new approaches and diagnostics to help end MTDs and promote global health equity. On behalf of the communities we serve in 27 countries and the philanthropists who generously support NTD elimination through the end fund, we commit to the WHO 2030 Roadmap Goals. Every investment we make is a co-investment with our government partners. Did you know that Indonesia has the third highest number of people diagnosed with leprosy each year? I am Marloes Gijsen, a dermatologist from Okru, Indonesia, and conduct clinical and social research to improve the diagnosis and treatment of leprosy. The U.S. Agency for International Development is proud to be working alongside over 30 countries in their fight against neglected tropical diseases. Sightsavers is fully committed to NTDs, and we're committed to the WHO roadmap, which shows the way. We've been working in this sector for decades and much more is needed to be done. At the Royal Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, we've been dedicated to fighting NTDs for many decades. We're proud to be part of the community on this World NTD Day. CWW aims for a world free of intestinal worms. Through guidance and goodwill, we commit to building the capacity of global health programs to meet the 2030 STH targets. The NNN's working groups and annual conference bring diverse communities together to foster cross-sectoral collaborations to beat NTDs. In 2022, about 8,400,000 people in South Sudan were in need of treatment for at least one neglected tropical disease. This figure is about 76% of the total population and about 98% of rural populations, making South Sudan one of the world's neglected tropical diseases most burdened countries. At Landos, we are 100% committed to zero neglected tropical diseases. At Visual DX, through the project of Impact NTD, we're working to accelerate the decentralization of skin NTD care to the primary health care level units by leveraging artificial intelligence for the diagnosis and management of skin NTD. In Ethiopia, we are tackling protoconosis, a debilitating neglected tropical disease. Alongside partners, we are integrating NTD diagnosis and treatment into primary health care and helping to empower those affected to improve their own health, social bonds and economic status. Malaria Concertum is committed to the NTD roadmap. DSK is 100% committed to ending neglected tropical diseases. Since 1999, we have donated over 11 billion doses of our medicines. With our partners, we remain committed to achieve WHO 2030 goals of eliminating NTDs. Tropical Data is committed to the NTD Roadmap 2030, supporting health ministries with surveys to track progress towards their NTD elimination goals. At Anesvat Foundation, we are committed to the elimination of skin NTDs and its 2030 Roadmap. We act and invest in partnership with an important network of organizations whose mission like ours, is to put an end to these neglected diseases. Our joint efforts are vital to the achievement of our common goal. The International Coalition for Trachoma Control is committed to collaboration and partnership to deliver the goals of the NTD Roadmap 2030, including the elimination of trachoma as a public health problem by 2030. At SCI Foundation, we're committed to delivering the NTD vision by aligning our new strategy to the three pillars of the Roadmap. We strongly believe this is how we can support progress on the SDGs and UHC. The Fred Hollows Foundation is pleased to join the World Health Organization in celebrating World Neglected Tropical Diseases Day. We're committed to tackling neglected tropical diseases, especially the painful blinding disease of trachoma. This ancient disease needs to be eliminated and we know how to do it. We are 100% committed to ending NTDs, working with members and partners here in Canada and around the world towards achieving the WHO NTD Roadmap 2030 goals. I evaluate interventions attempt to mitigate NTD-related stigma 
in order to suggest optimal strategies to improve the lives of affected individuals. I'm committed to fight NTDs. The WHO NTD Roadmap highlights that diagnostic testing is fundamental to beating NTDs. FIND remains committed to working with partners to accelerate development of new tests, improving access to the ones that we already have, so that everyone can get treatment when they need it and decision makers can direct health resources effectively. We need new innovations, new financing mechanisms, and new partnerships to defeat these devastating diseases. It's been a privilege to lead Ghana's development of our zero democracy roadmap and action plan, which aligned with the WHO and roadmap. The Global Partnership for Zero Democracy is fully committed to the WHO and roadmap. ये आउंड उपेक्षित उष्ण प्रदेशीय रोग दिवस को अवसर में मैं यहाँ उस संपूर्ण सरकार वाला निकाय बुलाई इस रोग को अंतेरा नियंत्रण करने के लिए ठोस कदम चालन होना हार्दिक अनुरोध करते हैं। At the NTDs, the German network, we will continue our activities to bring together German and international stakeholders. It's essential that we act together to accelerate innovation and access of safe, affordable and effective health technologies for NTDs. UNDP and the Access and Delivery Partnership stand with WHO and other partners to fight against neglect. As part of our enduring commitment to NTDs and our pledge to the Kigali Declaration, Johnson & Johnson is working from the lab to last mile to fight the impact of NTDs such as STH, dengue and leprosy. We need more collaboration and more investments to tackle NTDs which have such devastating consequences for more than 1 billion people all over the world. We at Merck contribute to the WHO NTD roadmap by continuing to deliver up to 250 million tablets per year for the treatment of schistosomiasis, and we also develop new drugs and diagnostics. A world without NTDs such as schisto is possible. We at Youth Combating NTDs are committed to the WHO roadmap on neglected tropical diseases. The task force has been working to beat NTDs for almost 40 years. We're committed to the NTD roadmap, so act now. now. It really is so heartening to hear how partners across the globe are committed to this journey to eliminate NTDs by 2030. A very special community indeed. Now, commitment and cohesion is necessary, as is the mechanism or a mechanism to mobilize and track progress. Formally launched in June of last year at the Kigali Summit on Malaria and NTDs, the Kigali Declaration on NTDs is a high-level political declaration that is mobilizing political will, community commitment, resources and action, and securing commitments needed to end suffering caused by NTDs. It has already galvanized the largest collective financial commitment towards NTDs to date. As of January 2023, more than 1.6 billion US dollars and 19 billion tablets have been pledged. These commitments are helping to create the much needed momentum to deliver the targets set out in the WHO NTD roadmap, as well as achieve Sustainable Development Goal 3. Let's find out more. The Kigali Declaration on Neglected Tropical Diseases is an exciting, high-level commitment to end NTDs once and for all. Leaders from around the world are signing the declaration, mobilizing the political will, community engagement, resources, and action needed to stop suffering caused by these diseases. From financial commitments to drug and diagnostic donations, to technical assistance and supportive policies, each signatory makes a unique and vital contribution towards ending NTDs. Collectively, these will translate into incredible progress being made. With countries leading the way, international targets are embraced and translated into national strategies, leading to impact and progress. The actions set out in this powerful declaration will help us achieve the target for NTDs set out in Sustainable Development Goal 3 and deliver against the World Health Organization's NTD Roadmap. We thank all partners who have made commitments so far. 
and we call upon our fellow global leaders to show they are 100% committed to endorse the Kigali Declaration, to unlock the potential to end NTDs, to change the lives of billions of people globally, and to build a stronger, healthier, safer world. Let's act now, act together, and invest in neglected tropical diseases. And today on World NTD Day, Uniting to Combat NTDs is delighted to share new endorsers and commitments to the Kigali Declaration. At this juncture, though, I'd like to welcome Honorable Minister Mahama Aseini, who's the Deputy Minister of Health in the Republic of Ghana, to share a few words. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Honorable Alaj Mama Asisi, Duty Minister of Health of the Republic of Ghana. Honorable Ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the media, I am delighted to be joining you today in the celebration of the World NTDs Day. Ghana is proud to have been predicted by the World Health Organization for eliminating sleeping sickness just in the last few weeks, bringing to three the number of neglected tropical diseases Ghana has generated. Please join me in paying tribute to all the health workers and partners who have contributed to this success. What we stand here in celebration, we should not lose sight of the fact that there is yet more work to be done if we are to achieve the SDG targets for neglected tropical diseases and the World Organization Neglected Tropical Disease Roadmap. We need more countries to step up and invest in neglected tropical disease programs. This is why Kigali Declaration on Neglected Tropical Disease, recently launched by heads of state in Kigali, is so important. Today, Ghana has joined leaders from around the world in endorsing the Kigali Declaration on Neglected Tropical Diseases. As a nation, we commit to strengthening our efforts in fighting this disease and contributing to an African free for the best of neglected tropical diseases. Signing this declaration, we committed ourselves to continuing to implement strategies that will lead to the elimination of many more neglected tropical diseases in our country. Our country. We believe that this is a critical step towards building a healthier and more prosperous nation for all of our citizens. On the recent endorsement of the Kigali Declaration of the Elimination of Neglected Tropical Disease and Malaria. On behalf of the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Adudango Abubado, I wish to make a short statement. Neglected tropical diseases cause immense suffering in Ghana to have been the first country in sub-Saharan Africa to have eliminated trachoma. We have also erad eradicated guinea worm disease from our land. Further, we are on the brink of eliminating sleeping sickness and leprosy. Investing in NTD elimination programs creates a ripple effect in society. It leads to better education, health, and employment outcomes and transforms lives and our communities. It helps to reduce gender inequity and stigma. That is why I'm proud to endorse the Kigali De Declaration on Neglected Tropical Diseases. And Africa free from NTDs is possible. Let us act now and act together. Ghana is 100% committed to ending neglected tropical diseases. 
high level commitment that supports in country programs is vital. Thank you to President Akufo Addo for that message of continued support. We'll now hear from Tijana Williams, Director of the Albendazol Donation Programs Global Health Access at GSK. I'm really pleased to announce that GSK is further extending our donation commitment for sole transmitted helminthiasis to 2030. A disease which affects millions of children per year, predominantly from the most underserved communities. Alongside an ongoing commitment to donate our medicines until lymphatic fluorisis is eliminated as a public health <coughs> problem everywhere, we will donate up to 100 million doses for STH per year from 2026 to 2030. At GSK, we remain 100% committed to ending NTDs in alignment with the WHO roadmap. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tiana. Next, the US Agency for International Development is one of the major donor agencies supporting NTD programs. Let's listen in to what Rob Henry, the Senior Public Health Advisor for NTDs, has to say. Hi. I'm Rob Henry with the U.S. Agency for International Development Neglected Tropical Disease Program, Office of Infectious Disease, Bureau for Global Health. While incredible progress has been made, there is still more to be done to beat NTDs. The United States government, through fiscal year 2023, has appropriated $114.5 million towards ending NTDs. This support, through the U.S. Agency for International Development and partners, will help countries to continue their efforts to control and eliminate NTDs while bolstering operational research, diagnostic research and development, and sustainable health services. Thank you. And thank you to partners at USAID. It is through strong learning partnerships that we can really elevate the commendable ongoing efforts of the NTD community. And now we'll hear from Stuart Halford, Director of Resource Mobilization and Advocacy at Uniting to Combat NTDs. He is going to tell us about a new tool to track and monitor commitments. Is that right? Thank you, Patricia. Yes, it is. Um, and let me start by saying, um, we also want to wish everyone around the world a happy World NTD Day. Um, I want to start by saying that I'm delighted to share that the Anisbad Foundation, who have been working to, re to reduce NTDs on a global scale since 1968, have signed the Kigali Declaration on NTDs to mobilize 34 million euros until 2026 to reduce the burden of skin NTDs in Sub-Saharan Africa. These new commitments are to be celebrated. However, we can't stop here. Uniting to Combat Neglected Tropical Diseases continues to welcome endorsements and commitments for the Kigali Declaration. More resources are needed, and if we are to reach the targets of the WHO 2030 NTD roadmap and safeguard the hard-won gains of the past decades. Finally, today, the Kigali Declaration Commitment Tracker has been launched. This is a new online tool to capture track and monitor commitments made as part of the Kigali Declaration on NTDs in order to deliver the WHO roadmap. And this tool represents a major step forward in our ability to better understand the current funding landscape for NTDs and more effectively address shortfalls and gaps. And by publishing comprehensive information on committed resources, the tracker is able to provide a new level of transparency that will enable us to hold each other accountable and effectively mobilize new resources that are required to end the suffering caused by these diseases. And to learn more about the Kigali Declaration on NTDs and to see the commitment tracker, I urge everyone to visit the Uniting to Combat NTDs website, which is at unitingtocombatntds.org. Thanks. Thank you so much, Stuart. Great to hear about the Kigali Declaration Commitment Tracker there. Let's uh, now listen in to a special message. Continuing with his steadfast support of the NTD community is the World Health Organization's Director General, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus. Around the world, Neglected tropical diseases or NTDs afflict more than 1 billion people, trapping generations in cycles of poverty and stigma. But in recent years, 
neglected tropical diseases have become just a little less neglected. Over the past decade, the number of people requiring treatment for an NTD has dropped by 25%, and 47 countries have eliminated at least one NTD, including eight countries last year alone. But we continue to face many deep-rooted challenges which have been compounded by the COVID-19 pandemic, including securing sustainable funding to deliver entity programs in countries. In 2021, WHO launched a roadmap for entities with global targets to prevent, control, eliminate and eradicate 20 entities and disease groups. We need everyone's support to accelerate towards those targets. Investing in entities is not just an investment in fighting single diseases. It's also an investment in water, sanitation and hygiene, vector control, one health, stronger health systems, universal health coverage, and the fight against poverty. Today, on World Entity Day, WHO's message is clear. Act now. Act together. Invest in entities. reiterating the importance of funding partnerships and the critical tie-in to delivering on a number of United Nations health goals. Thank you to Dr. Tedros for always taking time to share his thoughts with us. Now, ensuring the needs of the people living with NTDs are met, we must keep their voices and hopes close. Let's now listen in to Tijani Salami in Nigeria, Joana Gomez de Araujo from Brazil, Silifat Abdul Ghaniu from Nigeria, Prima Garti Magar from Nepal, and Benjamin Nkasa Miller from Ghana about what a community without NTDs would look like. I'm Tijani Salami. Uh, I'm a physician by training in Nigeria in one of the rural hospitals. Uh, I myself am a sufferer of this disease. This disease has rendered many people uh, very, very incapacitated. Then they have become debilitated. Uh, they have lost their means of uh, livelihood. You will see that uh, my my community will be will be free of all this uh, discrimination if there were no uh, neglected tropical diseases among those people. So I'm 100% committed to see the end to this kind of uh, diseases. My name is Joanda Gomes de Araújo. I'm 55 years old. I'm a natural in a city called Timbaúba. Atualmente, eu moro numa cidade chamada Marayal. A doença de Chaga veio por volta da minha adolescência, onde veio de, de uma forma crônica, onde coloquei o um marca-passo, onde assim, as pessoas não, não, não têm o atendimento necessário. Estou 100% comprometida em acabar com a doença tropical negligenciada no mundo. Sou Nana Silfato Abdugani. Eu sou Jega Jankevi. Eu sou Nika Mafawaga Kawanga. Eu sou Aka Yemen Aka Bani Bayani Kama. Eu sou Nika Mafawaga in a gin soaky, Abu Abin de Ban Ya Yida, in a Ghanaian so in a ya and ye, though in a summer soaky coach can't hear, in a yan to hear the dama. I've been in a car, Sarayuana, Quata Naga Rayuana, La here than some of the caresses. As if it is here, Motoy and Sir, eh, a honey de sea, a cola de ua. A kula de rua wende akasa. Government deba mo rua. Mudandi biruana korai wende za mudansa. 
Praise the man, I didn't choose that. Special greeting to you all from Ghana. My name is Benjamin Enkansa Miller. I found a little spot on my leg, but I could not take it, took it seriously. A few days later, when I was crashing, I found it very hard and very painful to my body. Later, I found a big sore on my leg that I could not manage to do anything. Due to the help of the doctors, I am now okay. I can go anywhere. I can even play football. I can even dance. Even I have a family. Namaste. My name is Pirimagarthi Magaro. My Nepal is a big girl in the city of Nepal. I am 41 years old. I am a young girl. 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 मिशन अस्पताल दांग लोगियो लोगिये को थियो जहाँ मलाई कुशलों लागे को पुष्टि भायो सोई अस्पताल बाटा मलाई उपचार कराए उपचार मा लागी रह दा पढ़ाई छुट्टी और एक टाइम्स वर्ष को उम्र मा मात्र पहले छुट्टी विद्यालय भरना भाई पढ़ाई ले मिरन तरता दी हाल मा असिस्टेंट फार्मेसी के रूप मा अपने स मेरे पाने अन्य साथी और जस्ताई हासने खेलने साथी रुने थिए समय में विद्यालय जाना पाउने थिए मेरे समुदाय में समुदाय बेटले उने थियो तिहा रोग संग संबंधित कुने गिरना उने थिए ना माने सरुबीज आपसी साथ भाप उने थियो मा इस तो खाल को नेक्लेटेड ट्रॉपिकल डीजीज को अंधे को लागी हंड्रेड परसेंट कथी बदला � Yes, their voices represent the hopes of countless people envisioning a world without NTDs. Now, thank you to all the panelists and of course to the global NTD community for their inspired level of commitment. We celebrate you all today for the significant achievements gained during uncommon and challenging times and for the unwavering and invaluable dedication to the ongoing work. Now, as we wrap today's celebration, we leave you with a few special videos highlighting some of the ongoing work. But for this, I'd like to invite back on screen, Dr. Fahl. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Patricia. It's my great pleasure now to announce the launch of the GON Network to address the challenges and opportunities and to move forward with critical actions in the elimination of oncocerciasis. WHO member state and partners have established a new global oncocerciasis network for elimination, referred to as GON. The strengthen partnership and communication and to assist member states in achieving the 2030 roadmaps on cancer elimination goals. The network is, will enable countries' representative programs and partner organizations to work together to ensure cancer cases is gone soon. In a moment, we will see a video about the new GON network, as well as videos on multi-sectoral approach to vector-borne diseases. Another video will mark World Leprosy Day 2023, which was celebrated yesterday. And lastly, the slide will end the webinar with the provisional Guinea number for 2022. Before that, though, I would like to take this final opportunity to thank everyone for joining today and for your unwavering commitment to a world free from entities. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thanks once again for joining WHO and uniting to combat NTDs on this very special occasion. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye. Thank you.
Introducing the multi-sectoral approach to vector-borne diseases, because VBDs cannot be addressed by the health sector alone. Why do we need a multi-sectoral approach, or MSA? Despite significant progress, vector-borne diseases, or VBDs, are still responsible for more than 700,000 deaths globally per year. VBDs are notoriously complex to address. They are spread by vectors, mainly insects and ticks, transmitting pathogens such as viruses, bacteria and parasites. This means VBDs are strongly influenced by environmental factors, such as climate change, and anthropogenic factors, such as economic and social issues, including population displacement. Because VBDs are influenced by multiple factors, their management and control cannot be achieved by the health sector alone. This is the motivation behind the multi-sectoral approach, which brings together stakeholders from various sectors to tackle VBDs using shared knowledge, resources and tools. The aim of this collaboration is to reduce the impact of vector-borne diseases by reducing exposure and strengthening the health system. But an effective MSA must also benefit the other sectors involved, therefore enhancing collaboration and trust. How do we build an MSA? An effective MSA is made up of three components. The base comprises three pillars, commitment of leaders, coordination of work, and community engagement. The technical elements drive meaningful engagement through joint activities and between different domains. The energy elements help to mobilize partners and pool resources, from human and financial to policy and legal support. To be successful, an MSA must also be tailored to the local context. Just one example is the Henan Malaria Elimination Plan in China, which used a multi-sectoral approach to bring together sectors such as trade, tourism, finance, health, telecommunications and education. Through this collaboration, malaria elimination was achieved across the province in 2020. What next? To continue the fight against VBDs globally, we must work locally to implement meaningful MSAs that accelerate progress and save lives. I was diagnosed with Hansen disease leprosy four years ago. I experienced Hansen disease when I was very young. I was diagnosed with leprosy at the age of eight years. Uh, my grandmother was affected, my parents too. I was ashamed, I was depressed. treatment uh, treatment level The villagers won't to you know talk with us they will come near us delayed diagnosis mutilates and cause the affected persons to have physical impairments i also reached very late to the hospital because there was not much awareness about the disease in my family and that causes deformity in my hand in Maradi, where I grew in the community of persons affected, I saw people suffering from stigma, suffering from discrimination. Maradi, <laughs> 